Hi friends, I am going to start a new read aloud and it's about Lewis and Clark. <clears throat> it's by George Sullivan. Chapter one is the introduction. <clears throat> Having for many days past confined myself to the boat, I determined to devote this day to amuse myself on shore with my gun and view the interior of the country lying between the river and Corvus Creek. Before sunrise, I set out with six of my best hunters. These words are from the pen, the quill pen of Meriwether Lewis, along with William Clark. Lewis led the famous voyage of discovery into what is now the Northwestern United States. It was a vast wilderness area at the time. During their long journey, both Lewis and Clark kept a detailed daily record of what they saw. What's written above is from Lewis's journal entry from Monday, September 17th, 1804. The explorers were traveling north on the Missouri River. They were passing through what is now South Dakota. In the entry, Lewis told of seeing hawks, small wolves, and some polecats. He saw herds of buffalo. He also saw several herds of antelope. He described the antelope as being shy and watchful and watchful, shy and watchful. Neither Lewis nor Clark could have won a spelling contest because they spelled the word shy, S-H-Y-E, and watchful, W-A-T-C-H-F-U-L-L. -L. Oops. <laughs> Misspelled words are common in their journals. Lewis spoke of the plants and trees he cited. He noticed a grove of plum trees. The fruit was much the same as back home in Virginia. He remarked how green the grass was. <clears throat> Reading what Lewis and Clark wrote, one gets the feeling of almost being with the explorers. Each man made notes during the day. When time allowed, they wrote in their journals. Writing was never an easy task for the explorers. They had to carefully mix water and powdered ink to get an ink supply. They used a quill to write. A quill is the tip of a feather, often from a goose. It had to be dipped into ink after every second or third word. If Lewis and Clark wrote at night, they worked by lantern light. The two men wrote in small notebooks. As each notebook was filled, it was put into a small tin box. The box was sealed to make it waterproof. A good number of the Lewis and Clark journals have survived to this day. Eighteen are in the collection of the American Philosophical Society of Philadelphia. The Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis also has some of the journals. The Lewis and Clark expedition is one of the great adventure stories in American history. The explorers' journals that report on that trip are, in the words of historian Stephen Ambrose, a national literary treasure. The journals help to answer questions about the journey. They are a primary source. Primary sources are actual records that have been handed down from the past. Diaries, speeches, and letters are primary sources. Along with the journals of Lewis and Clark, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address is a primary source. So are census records. A photograph of your grandmother could be a primary source if you were writing about her. A secondary source is a description of an event written by someone who did not witness it. Textbooks are secondary sources. The World Book Encyclopedias and other encyclopedias are secondary sources. Serious students use primary sources in writing reports or biographies. Primary sources such as the journals of Lewis and Clark have enormous value. They give us the actual words of those involved in the event. They're also fun to read, says Stephen Ambrose. Quote, reading the Lewis and Clark journals puts you in a canoe with them. You see the country through their eyes. You and the captains are in a constant state of surprise because as you read and as they write, you never know what's around the next bend of the river or what will happen next. And that's the end of the introduction.